Now, I kid you not, this right here, and how is the sound now? Uh, please let me know in the live chat uh, if you can hear me. Um, autodidactic ghost. I need to learn how to edit and uh, other way around. Uh, I would... Anywho. Um, but this, what I have up, is clearly geopolymer of and megalithic stonework ancient as uh you know the original pyramid builders uh the macro terraforming uh original demigod or master builder giant civilization uh you know the level two or level three um plain wide rendering building uh, macro terraforming uh, constructing within their image uh, anywho regardless of that this right here is the sphinx of uh, pyramid lake in nevada usa and it goes hand in hand with uh oops Oh, nah, that's, sorry, wrong way. Oh, I, there we go. Here's more uh, angles of it. So you can see this giant sphere that was hollow broken into, and then the sphinx, the head, and the different, uh, what looks like megalithic uh, conglomerate geopolymer concrete of some sort. Uh, another pyramid mountain in the background. This is actually the island uh, within the lake and the head of the Sphinx itself. Uh, another image. Usually this is underwater. Um, and here's from now the drying out uh, lakefront beach or land of uh, the lake. Um, this is the first smaller pyramids that just the tip and then the second uh mean <coughs> uh you know uh just speechless it's a giant step pyramid just like the rest that uh fascinating stuff i would just wonder what else is beneath here is Another one in the U.S., uh, Chaco Canyon, of course, a uh, major, major settlement. And uh, just going to have some ridiculous exposing old Diet Dazzle, you got it. And that is going to be happening in September. Uh, welcome, Youthful Emergence, Andrew Powers, Ian, Sister Tranquil Vortex, Asa, Azaz Shoru. I hope I got that okay. Lapis Philosopherum, Ian, Brother Logan Rothschild. And thank you, Logan. Rothschild for being a member and all the members at monthly YouTube membership. It is a great way to uh, support uh, a few dollars uh, a month for those that uh, are able and uh, afford to do so. And I will be doing, I do have a bunch of um, exclusive YouTube members contents posts and a lot more of uh, pictures of my alchemy the monoatomics uh, the electrolysis the electroculture the real science all of uh, the experiments if you want to the alchemy make sure to follow me on Twitter Instagram TikTok, and uh, the especially the members section where i get, do a lot more of the daily posts and pictures updates of the alchemy real science next real science episode coming tonight uh episode 40 
with Paranoid American and uh, the regular group, but it's going to be going into the AI imaging and so much, so much more. Uh, this was some of the Mandelbrot uh, ones. Let's see here. There we go. The Mandelbrot ones that uh, Thomas made uh, with us originally, as well as um, with Jeremiah, JP, Exotic Propulsion, myself, and Paranoid American, Thomas, PA, made uh, a bunch of entering in Jeremiah's specific uh, physics and scientific term words um, in just advanced dimensional physics and propulsion and whatnot, uh, the AI came up with some of these very fascinating uh, different images and dimensional charts. And then when entering in the Mandelbrots uh, and space life. So just some of the ones from past episodes, Paranoid American, myself, The Real Science Tonight, uh, maybe we'll have Sirtis, who knows if uh, he can make it. But uh, yeah, and look at this. Par Pyramid Lake, Nevada, USA. Uh, undeniable and the Sphinx to boot with it. And uh, all right, so these are the goblins, I believe, in Arizona or New Mexico. Uh, some more, and uh, I believe these guys are in Colorado. And this is left over Titan and giant uh, megalithic, uh, catastrophic um, monuments. And where these are from, you know, the fourth and fifth ages of. Uh, the sun and humanity and earth. Uh, these guys are more likely from the fourth, third, uh, and probably second or first um, cycles, ages, epochs of giants, titans, whatever uh, existed before the megafauna, the dinosaurs, the everything you know the giant platypus giant sloths giant beavers giant insects giant uh reptiles giant humans why not giant mastodons mammoths giant rhinos saber-toothed tigers giant humans and most likely titans being the very first master uh, builder, demigod, gods that then uh, created the, you know, the land beneath in their, uh, shaped it in their image and uh, created the demigods or us beneath them. And uh, yeah, you know, they cycled out. Maybe they're still in planes above or in this plane uh, below or above. Uh, you know, the Jack and the Beanstalk, and the Giants, just rewatch that. Can't get over how it said them Giants are uh, above the land between heaven and earth, right? That they existed in a realm above us and descended down. Gonna have to do some... Sumerian and Babylonian and uh, Book of Enoch uh, readings, Old Testament, uh, take a new look at it all. This is one, I believe, one of the monuments in the Grand Canyon, but it could be anywhere uh, pretty much in Southwest America. Can a dummy could see ya. Um, so I I get a 50-50 with him. Um I I'd like to see you know he's put a lot out there and he's trying, but we'll see what comes of it. And you know, I do have questions 
for Mr. Greer. I'd love to speak to him sometime. I can attest to the one time I tried the CE5. Uh, I did experience a massive, extremely slow, beyond bright, ridiculously like just large and slow moving flaming fireball that went across the entire night sky directly between the two stars that I had shone my laser pointer uh, flashed on back and forth while um, astral projecting myself, my consciousness up through the CE5 thing. And then uh, when I stopped the laser that this big burning thing happened and uh, you know, believe what you want. Uh, that's something I live with. And, you know, I have yet to be in the right environment and point in my life to, you know, take it to the next level. And, you know, it's like when you had a first experience like that, why, you know, risk not repeating it until uh, you're ready to actually uh, have it uh, repeat in such a way. This is in Siberia. Massive, unexplained uh, mountains of organized megalithic stone. Uh, this one called the Nest. And it's... Uh, there's similar similar sites really all over the world. Um, all right. We're getting deep into it here. This guy, Egyptian bead. Where was it found again? I think North America. I will be organizing all 5,000 or 4,000 pictures uh, that uh, I've collected and labeled uh, over the last uh, week here. This is from Klaus Donna's collection uh, into about 10 different organized folders uh, and then doing specific videos on each topic including the biogeology, titanology, and giants. Uh, pyramids and ley lines and alignments and uh, another primary water and mines and mountains uh, segments as well as um, cathedrals and castles and Tikwatek um, megaliths and dolmens and I forget what else. There are very, very many. But look at this, you know, like under the entire Giza plateau is all of these things. And they say, oh, they're burials. They're buried with all of their things. Well, I think this is perfect evidence of mud flood. What if, you know, this tsunami just buried everything? And, you know, people, all, everybody died with all of their things. Quite possible. Uh, you know. Um, but all of these are not natural. Uh, they're just super ancient, super eroded, and been through several rounds of catastrophe. Um, I'm going to play the, uh, video, a bit of the video of myself, Shem, Elkman, and Esra from yesterday, uh, where we, uh, Brian brings up the map and we find, uh, the pyramids in, uh, none of it, Canada. And then, uh, I'm going to bring up some of the web site that uh, we have exploring the articles devon island the largest uninhabited island in the world 
Devon Island also has pyramids and macro structured terraformed what looks like artificial uh, mountain ranges, coastal ranges, block work, uh, and just terraformed islands. Potentially some Nan Madol in it. Uh, look at the none of it. So this is the indigenous Inuit uh, Northwestern Native uh, peoples of Canada's languages. Uh, that's pretty similar to a few. Wow, like mind blowing. I'm going to be getting back into this. Um, but yeah, Devon Island, it looks pretty Slavic, actually. Very Slavic, indeed. Like, it's so Russian, it's ridiculous, a.k.a. Tartarian. Um, oh, wow, that's a monument island as well. If it is an island and not icebergs. Uh, but yes, NASA is... Devon Island is famous for not only being the largest uninhabited island in the world uh, that nobody lives on it, especially around, but NASA has set up several uh, training rover missions on Devon Island that also has what looks like megalithic uh, and pyramids. Does it straight up has pyramids? Uh, look at this straight circular. Like, it's like it's very very beyond suspicious it is meets the pyramid uh pre cataclysmic macro structured um blueprints it's pre cataclysmic pyramid macro terraforming community uh, and that there is a lot of information to do with this, and that hominid, which one did you email me at, and when? If I I must have missed it, and please uh, just hit resend on it, as I get so many different ridiculous like up like. Um, spam from the youtube and the rumble and the odyssey and the tiktok and all the different accounts for each email that they get emails get lost very quickly and i try to uh respond when i get them and or star them and respond when i have time and i've been uh, horrible with that lately this last week though i do need to go through my emails and i apologize to anybody that i'm missing and telegram i Freaking, I have my new phone right here. I'm going to switch over to it this week before this week is done, before it becomes July, at which point I will finally start doing my Telegram. And I've been using the new tablet more, so I will put Telegram on there and start getting on the Telegram. I'm very sorry. I do have a new TikTok going uh, that is Burni, at Burni369. Uh, almost at a thousand subscribers. It's only a month old. Uh, Devon Island, Canada, with pyramids in it, and NASA and NASA rovers, and that Devon Island, they try to uh, claim that oh, it's just uh, it's just rover testing and. You know, it's just the harsh conditions. And then the conspiracy of Devon Island is that, uh, well, for all we know, uh, that they were shooting Mars rover footage on Earth off of Devon Island, never actually being in Mars. And, well, if you see all the Mars anomalies of different, like, pyramids and megaliths and stuff, and life, well, if you subscribe to the idea that it is on Devon Island, well, that would half make sense. But there are also now pyramids on Devon Island. And this brings me 
to a new idea and suspicion and with we get back to the rumors of both the demigod uh, master builder civilizations and that uh you know if we subscribe to the idea that these pyramids were built by these uh demigod nephilim uh anunnaki titan um macro engineering um seed designing uh civilization culture and that uh you know these some of these pyramids are tombs or within them somewhere next to them are tombs that uh if they're digging up these uh potentially buried giants or um off-world uh civilizations or tombs that come from other realms lands or times is that why in fact they uh NASA is there and exploring and why NASA uh, is all suited up on Devon Island and using rovers, just like they do in Antarctica. So, could, and the rumors of these pre-Adamite civilizations in Antarctica, all of the famous or, you know, important political and religious people, all of a sudden going to Antarctica, shout out to Eric Hecker and his recent uh, disclosure uh, on his time at Antarctica working for, uh, was it Raytheon, I believe? Um, yeah, a Raytheon contractor. And what he saw there, uh, and it was part of uh, Stephen Greer's disclosure at uh, the D.C. Washington Press Club. And, you know, it's bring, they're trying to force disclosure. They're releasing it to the public, releasing it to uh, Congress and the Senate that's willing to listen and any media that's willing to cover it. And, uh, you know, this is very suspicious, this Devon Island, uh, just like, is this what they're actually doing in the summers going in like, uninhabited island but look barely no no ice no snow at all all light and pyramids and very very sus very very sus indeed um why are they going up to this island that supposedly um is completely uninhabited oh there's a tent but that could be a potential buried pyramid. Um, these coasts, like, so this red sandstone granite or red sandstone limestone layers that we see, it's this macro terraform stuff. It's the exact same stuff in Jordan, Petra, in Egypt, in uh, throughout the Midwest, Utah, U.S., Grand Canyon, uh, throughout malta throughout the uk and paul cook and uh, nikki b's works and that it also is in these islands devon island and um anywhere that the master builder uh technology remains former epoch uh, structures remain was with that red white limestone geopolymer layers and oh look at that that is look at this like how do you have perfectly structured right angle right angle like this is just nuts that that is canal degree like grade look at this right this is terraformed from the master builder technology and it also looks just like the badlands badland national parks everywhere in the world uh always look like this these badlands with these different layers uh which could be potentially look more like uh, structured alternating geopolymer or ruined 
uh, layers as opposed to natural uh, deposited layers. Um, this is as super sus as we get. It looks macro terraformed running around with rovers. Why are they doing all these rovers up here? That looks uh, potentially megalithic up there. Like, oh, wow. Why are you going around in suits? Why? Why? What's the biohazard up here? What are you exploring? Is it the land of giants that you're exploring? Like, you, you didn't build that. These guys didn't build that in their freaking suits. Are you kidding me? They're like generation uh, gosh knows what. But what this does look like is perfectly terraformed right angles everywhere. And just like what I'm going to show today in Iran, what I'm going to show in Saudi Arabia, what I'm going to show in Afghanistan, what I'm going to show throughout continental U.S., what I'm going to show everywhere, what we are looking at at Devon Island Valley, Canada, in the northernmost islands. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go. You get these pre-cataclysmic, macro structured terraformed design like look at these these are more of them crazy walls what is special about devon island well what how how about them the massive walls i say that's pretty special about devon island and uh how about the pyramids in devon island yeah yeah they're definitely pretty Pretty special, too. Um, just fascinating. And it really, really does bring up that idea of Anunnaki or Nephilim, giant, titan, demigod, pre-Adamite uh, master civilization builders, right? Like... Like what what are these data set from Devon Island De that looks like just what is going on in Devon Island what really is going on in Devon Island and not just Devon Island. Look at this. Another pyramid mountain on Devon Island. Um, they really are. Really are. Just blows, blows me mind every time. What is NASA's true purpose? All right. Then we've got this one. More mountain. More mountain pyramids. Oh. Oh, my. How long am I frozen for? Oh my goodness, I'm back and I'm back. It's so frustrating, but well, we're still here. Okay, what was I showing? Nature built this. Nature did not build these. 
and they map out to specific area. Mountains of Tenerife. No, these are the pyramids of Tenerife. This is the Azor Islands. Uh, and yeah, this is Tenerife. Shout out Richie 007. And look at that. What is this giant Titan skull carving in the background behind the giant step pyramid? How many do we have to see around the world? Nature does not build these. Also in Tenerife, look at that. These, look at that. That is a sphinx. That is a sphinx in Tenerife. Um, fascinating stuff. There's actual other pyramids that are recognized as built pyramids, more recent uh, human-sized pyramids in uh, the Azores and Tenerife as well. But look, this is the giant guy right here. Uh, like some sort of animal, possibly Sphinx. Another monument in the back on there. Just fascinating, fascinating. Everywhere we look, more and more. Um, where else? Pyramid found St. Thomas, Jamaica pyramid. Um, all of these, I, here we go. The Caribbean one. This is the one. Uh huh. There we go. Um, but back to be none of it in Devon Island. As that looks like another pyramid on Devon Island. And that looks like a megalithic Anukshuk on David Island. Um, and of course, they'll tell you NASA made the stuff. Uh, I guess you guys didn't see that, did you? Oopsies. Share this one. Here we go, and this is what I was looking for all along. We're starting with, shout out Olaf the Sverker, and uh, the 7,000 year old Slavic calendar. Uh, Olaf, great channel, and yeah, we will play this first. Hello again, everybody, and today we are going to be talking about the ancient Slavic calendar. Let me know how the sound is, please. Now, there are many calendar systems in use in the world today, and there are even more if we go further back in time. In the West, we use what is known as the Gregorian calendar, which in 1582 replaced the Julian calendar. And the Julian calendar had been in place since the times of Julius Caesar, and he put that calendar in effect in 46 BC. The Chinese use a different calendar, and on their calendar it is currently the year 41, no, 4717. And this associates, as we know, a different year with different animals and different elements. The year in which these calendars place us in has a massive degree of variance depending on which one we use. So the Jewish calendar puts the year at 5781, for example, and the Indian calendar places the date exactly 57.6 years ahead of us on our Gregorian calendar. Now these calendars are more or less fairly well known, and when we think of ancient calendars, we usually think of the Mayan calendar, which as you know, was supposed to chronicle the end of days in 2012, and I'm sure we know how that went. But in 1944, scientists made the discovery of a far older and a far more accurate calendar, even when compared to our own interpretation of the modern day and time, and the calendar I'm talking about is the Slavic Aryan Vedic calendar which places the current year at 7,529 from the creation of the Star Temple, eh, from the creation of the world in the Star Temple.
Now, the full date as of recording this video, uh, as far as the Slavicarian calendar is concerned, the full date is the year 7529, and the ninth summer in the circle of life on the 35th daylet of the month, which is known as Tritanic. This calendar was in use through Russia and Eurasia, Eurasia until Peter the I, I refused to call him Peter the Great, had a reform and he converted the entire country to Christianity and as such changed the date to be counted from the birth of Christ as opposed to the creation of the world in the Star Temple. Now there's very little written about this in modern times, however, if you go to Peter the First Wikipedia page, you can see here, in 1699, Peter changed the date of the celebration of the New Year from the 1st of September to the 1st of January. Traditionally, years were reckoned from the purported creation of the world, and after Peter's reform, they were counted from the birth of Christ. Thus, in the year 7,270 of the old Russian calendar, Peter proclaimed that the Julian calendar was in effect, and the year was 1700. Now, although we knew about the existence of this calendar because of Peter's reform, there was very, very, very little written documents until in the 1940s, scientists began the translation of these documents here, the Slavic Aryan Vedas, which were golden tablets that, that need, needed translation into Russian. They've still not been translated into English, and as today, only one of them has actually been translated into Russian. Now, as we can see here, there were still some accounts uh, of the true date. In fact, there was, there was a few despite the censors going about and destroying any evidence of this calendar having ever existed. One of the, the best ways of controlling a people is to, to take away their history, and one of the best ways to take away their history is to, to deny their most significant event, and it's usually a significant event that these calendars start to account from. This extremely complex and accurate calendar requires no adjustment for leap years and runs in perfect cycles. This calendar shows that not only the, the history of the Slav people extends back far further than what mainstream historians would tell us, including their written language, but also speaks volumes for the development of these people, as any calendar requires the usage of written records and observation of celestial events. For the calendar to have reached the date of 7208 before changing, uh, it shows that the people remained unified for this entire time under one empire, and that the same calendar was used throughout. Here we can see a, a monument where the date is written as 7,162. So you can see that even after this reform, not everybody followed under the new calendar. Now, I am not getting into the etymology of words because I'm sure there is many people that study Latin that would argue with me. However, the name for this calendar as we know it is Kaliadidar, which when translated means the gift of Kolyada. Kolyada being the person that designed this calendar in the first place. Now this sounds not only like extremely like the modern day world of calendar but so do many indo-european words when looked at from an etymological perspective and without going into it here i believe that this gives us a true hint to the root of many of modern languages today this is the nikolsky cemetery in, in st petersburg and again you can see the date written although it's not very clear 7180 you name a single other race, a single other people, a single other country, nation, whatever you want to call it, empire on the face of this planet that has a history, a written, recorded history, stretching back seven, nearly seven and a half thousand years. Uh, it's the oldest calendar that exists on the face of this earth, and it makes the, the Mayan calendar look like a baby. So going back to, to the date in which this calendar begins, this will require a video on itself, but I kind of just throw it out there without explaining it. The, the creation of the world in the Star Temple. We must ask ourselves what this means. What event could have been so significant to the people at the time that they began a new calendar? They, they started to count from that date and stuck with it for over 7,200 years until the calendar, along with their history, was stolen out from underneath them. The creation of the world was nothing, the creation of the world in the Star Temple was nothing more than the conclusion of a millennia old war and the signing of a peace treaty between the two nations involved. The ancient Slavic Aryan Empire, which we know under its most modern name of Great Tartaria, and Cathay, or ancient Aramea, which we now know as China. This is the, the Alexander Cemetery in St. Petersburg, and again, if you look closely, if I've not lost it, where are we, where are we? What is the date in here? Somewhere. Okay, I can see it, I'll show you here. 
7,188. So back to the, the creation of the world in the Star Temple. Asura, the, the Prince of the Senya, as it was known at the time, we still speak about Asura today, however, we know him as the Hindu deity Hanuman. He ruled in Belvodai and Aramean, the, the ruler of Aramea or ancient China, created peace. That is, they concluded a peace treaty between the Great Race and the Great Dragon, according to which they defeated Aramea's Battle Wall, this wall we know today as the Great Wall of China. Uh, the wall at the time, however, was called Kitai, which when translated means Key, Great and Tai Wall. And this also explains how on all these ancient maps we see China referred to as Kathai or Kithai. Uh, it was a high fence or fortress wall. China at the time was known as the Great Wall or the Great Fence. The Kitai Garod in Moscow, for example, is not named because of any Chinese connection. It's named because of the Great Wall that surrounds it, the High Wall. You can see here there are numerous examples of, of this day extending further. This is uh, the... The Orthodox Cemetery in St. Petersburg, again, 7,388, they are putting the date out there. Now, the symbol for this victory, the sign of this peace treaty, is still known today. Uh, like any or most Christian iconography and Christian Christian mythos, it was pinched and stolen for the pagans, pinched and stolen for the people that came before them. And this symbol, that the, the victory over Cathay, is the, the symbol of St. George. It's a white knight on horseback striking down a dragon with a spear. This is Arca Seinhard, he's drawn from the 17th century, and what's that in the top left corner but a griffin. And again, I'm sure you all remember the, the symbol of the, the, the Chinese flag, the, the, the Chinese animal was a dragon. I'll show you it right now. This right here is the same dragon that St George struck down. I don't think any of us believe they actually fought a dragon. I think it's far more likely that it was metaphorical, and that metaphor being the structure. Now these are the Slavic Aryan Vedas I was talking about, and I have a copy of one of the translations here, but if you don't speak or read Russian, then I can only wish you good luck, because there is no English translation, and like I said, the, the Russian translation, the only part of it has been translated into Russian, but these were discovered in the early 40s and translated in the mid 40s. Just to show you another another couple of photos of St. George, this is the Grey Hours book. This is the 14th century, 1400s. And we can see that he is, is a black knight on white horseback striking down a dragon, a black dragon, which was what the river, the, the river of the black dragon, which was the, the name of the river that ran through Manchuria uh, back in the day. This is the fresco, the fresco of Anger Church in Gotland, Sweden, 15th century, and you can see the same image. However, there's, there's clearly something that they wanted to hide in this panel because it has been erased. It's not water damaged. You can see it's quite a specific area that they have deleted, and I wonder, I wonder why. This is the 4th century, far before any other depiction of St. George appeared, so we know that this story is, is of St. George is not the true one, and this is Horus and Palin set. We have uh, another one of St. George this time from the 11th century, and this time it is not a dragon that he is impaling, but a person. So again, I think it's quite safe to assume that the, the story of St. George impaling the dragon and killing it was metaph metaphorical and used to represent the destruction of the Chinese Empire, as the black dragon was the, the symbol of the Chinese Empire. Again, a Roman carving for the 4th or the 5th century, and this time he is striking down a person. And the same again here, in a 10th century uh, carving in a Georgian church. So going by the date of this calendar alone, it is safe to assume that this is the oldest calendar in the history of mankind, and as a result, the oldest empire, because you can't have a, a, a calendar without a single unified people following it. You can't have a calendar without rec written records for that entire time. And again, if there was a new empire, as was shown quite, quite easily when P P Peter I took over, they changed the calendar in order to destroy the true history of the people. Despite this being the oldest calendar in the history of the world, mainstream historians are eerily quiet about it. 